All right, uh, welcome to another tutorial in Maya. Today, what we're going to do is take a look at creating a collision and controlling that collision. Uh, in essence, we're going to make a sphere bump into some text. That's all. It's real simple. And we're going to use the plane and we're going to assign it some, some various properties. So, just want to show you kind of what we're up to. Uh, why would you want to do this? Well, what we need to do, uh, a lot of times you can't hand animate stuff like this and you have to use a solver, something that um, takes over the physics of that reaction and carries it through. So that's very hard to keyframe by hand and uh, you might be doing a titling sequence or something like that and um, you might need to, to make something fly out with a kind of like it was impacted by an object or something and um, there's a cool way to do that so let's take a look at this scene real quick um, you'll notice that I have a sphere some text a plane down here and we're working with active and passive rigid bodies so essentially that's what we're gonna do um, I'm gonna push this on pause here for a second we're gonna go back to um, kinda where I started um, I'm going to open that scene and I believe it was this one and I wanna open that one and we'll go ahead and save the changes there. So essentially here's where I started. Um, and what we're going to do is create this. First what you want to do is just create a plane and create a sphere, create some text, and then you know sprinkle some, some uh, point lights kind of around the scene. And uh, so mess with that real quick. Go ahead and push pause and um, set that up. Okay so now you can see what I've done. I've put the sphere a little bit above the grid and then I've created the plane and put it a little bit below the grid and uh, the text is sort of sitting there in the middle alright so that's kinda of where we want to start that's our starting point now what we want to do is look at the scene and say well we want the plane to act like a floor things to bounce off of so we'll just make that a passive rigid body because we don't want it to react so we'll just come up here and here to soft rigid bodies and we'll go to create passive rigid body okay so that will take care of, of the floor there now let's come over here and um, grab our text and let's also shift click the sphere and we want to make these active rigid bodies so we'll go ahead and make those active rigid bodies because they're going to be interacting together alright so that's pretty cool now if you leave that selected let's apply the gravity that's needed in order to make them react because right now we haven't applied any forces to them so let's just put some gravity on both of those okay great you can see where I've set my timeline up for 300 down here if I play this as it is now you'll see that gravity's acting on those objects just as we expect them to and they're bouncing off the floor that's great okay so as you have that now what we want to do is we we want to start this animation but we want to actually make this ball come and crash into it to here and then have this fly off somewhere so in order to do that we're gonna to have to work with a couple of things up here our active key and passive key for these objects so just keep that in mind and what we'll do is sort of we'll, we'll, we'll grab the first one right here let's grab this one and we're gonna basically not apply any kind of force to this yet so we're gonna make it passive for a little bit okay so I'm gonna come up here into our soft rigid bodies set passive key okay and that was on frame number one of the animation now I'm also gonna to wanna to do that for this one as well so I'm gonna come back here and because it's in the first frame we're gonna basically assign it a passive keyframe meaning that um, the solver is not gonna gravity is not gonna take over until we want it to okay so let's get a little bit different view and what I want to do is bring this ball down and over here to set another keyframe but before I do that before I move this ball I want to bring my time slider up about maybe 50 frames and then I want to move it to where it needs to go so it's we'll just put it kind of in the center and I'll bring it in here a little bit and let's get a little bit better view you can see where it's sitting over the top of that so we don't want that we want to bring it back a little bit and let's just come down 
and move it over just a little bit. Now it's important not to have any of these objects touching each other um, like the plane or, or the sphere or your text as you're doing this because the solver won't work. Uh, your simulation sometimes a lot of the time won't work or certain things won't go right so you have to be very aware of that so you can tell where there it is piercing the plane I don't want that I want to keep it just a little bit above and I don't want it piercing into the side of this text either so we'll just sort of leave it like that now if you look at our angle of view here uh, this will create a straight bump and I actually want it to be oh a little bit less so I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can bring this down a little bit more and uh, we'll see how far we can go with that. Now nope, it goes into there. Okay, so we'll leave it like that for the moment. All right, and there it is. So now we want to set that keyframe, but what we're going to do is make that an active keyframe now, and we'll set that for active right there. Okay, now we're going to click on this text and because it's at the same place we can kind of get away with doing it this way we can come up here again and now we can activate the text at that point okay so when I rewind this animation now let's take a uh, let's take a different view let's go to the front view I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit if I play this animation from the start you can see where boom it goes in and it hits that object and there it goes okay so what's cool about this? Well, our gravity that we applied to both of these objects does not even start happening until that keyframe at about 50 frames. And that's when we made everything active right now. So it basically uh, lets you keyframe an object to hit something to cause a reaction. Think of like a, a pool uh, ball hitting, you know, the, the cue ball hitting the rest of the balls. Um, it's actually outlined in the Maya um, documentation, so that's how you do this. So anyway, that's all we've done. And it's going to take a little bit of practice from here on out to set your keyframes correctly, or not set your keyframes, but just vary the properties of this reaction. So in this case, let's click on the plane and take a look at the plane for a second. Um, if we come up here into our tabs and you come to the tabs, go to your plane, um, go to the plane shape, and then it should have that that solver, that rigid body one solver on there. Let's look at one thing. Let's look at our bounciness to begin with because um, that we really can work with quickly. So right now it's at a default of six. Let's play it, see what happens. Okay, it goes, the text just kind of skids across the plane there. All right, that's kind of cool, but let's look at what happens when we take that bounciness and increase it. Let's just give it a let's just give it max bounciness right there at 2. Okay, so now if I rewind the animation and play it through, you'll see where it's going to hit that plane and it has a little bit more bounce to it. Now it's now it's starting to take off. So, that's cool uh, too, but let's do this. Let's zoom out a little bit and maybe take a little bit different view as our animation is happening here. Let's bring our bounciness back down a bit. Um, let's bring it to about there. And in this case, let's reduce the friction a little bit and maybe reduce the dynamic friction a little bit. And we'll go ahead and rewind it to frame one and there you go. Okay, so it's bouncing a little bit, not a lot, but let's change that up. You can keep playing around with these quite a bit um, once you have your simulation set up like this. So, um, you know, be aware that uh, you, you, can, uh, you can change things out. So, check this out. There it is. Now, let's do something else. Let's look at the gravity. Um, let's come into our, um, well, all right, let's click on uh, our outliner, and we want to we want to find out what that gravity is doing. So let's come down, let's grab the outliner. Here's the outliner, and let's just sort of see. Here's our gravity field that shows up right here. So I'm going to click on that. Now you'll notice that I have a couple of attributes for uh, gravity. Let's uh, look at that for a second. Let's take the magnitude of the gravity, say like down into the negative area. 
and let's rewind the animation and play it and we'll see what happens okay so completely different reaction when it goes into the negative um, maybe we'll we'll take it a little less into the negative and just sort of a little bit of negativity <laughs> not a good thing always got to be positive but you can see where that starts to do kind of what I wanted to do and that is super cool so that's how you do it um, now you can ready to texture it and do anything else you want um, you know you might want to play around with um, all of these different uh, things um, most of the time magnitude is, is going to be uh, something you're going to want to look at quite a bit and as well you're going to want to look at the, um, the various properties that you have set for your um, bounciness and, and friction so um, I hope that gets it this is a quick tutorial um, let's take a look and see what that looks like from the front view and here we go so play around with that um, it's a cool concept uh, you can add as many objects as you want um, be aware that when you create objects for this um, and you're using these rigid bodies that the more faces you have the more um, computationally expensive it gets because Maya wants to calculate all of this stuff um, as as far as the a face hitting a face and so it's just something to keep in mind um, but that's pretty much it um, let's take one more look at it go ahead and play around with this concept and remember this is just the concept but it kinda gives you a pretty good idea on how to make something kinda cool for some titling so there you go alright well so hope you had a good time with this tutorial and learned something and um, remember read a book every day or night and um, stay tuned for the next tutorial